People say that knowledge is power, but I think knowledge can be dangerous. When you're an intelligent person, a high achiever, the top in your class or maybe the best at your workplace, life never feels like the easy breezy, effortless experience that it is for other people. For some of us, overthinking isn't an occasional habit, it's our constant state of being. Worrying about if we'll achieve our goals isn't like a fleeting concern, it's the thing that our confidence is riding on. Speaking to new people isn't a fun opportunity to socialise, it's a stressful encounter that makes you analyse people's body language. High analyze what they say and think do they actually like me you can engage in social gatherings but you'd rather not you'd much prefer to spend the evening alone doing your own thing where you know you won't be judged or critiqued by everyone else but also by yourself some people say intelligence equals misery and maybe they're right maybe some smart people are more likely to be sad or depressed or just question the meaning of everything when you're a hard-working person wrestling with crazy ambitious goals you're constantly chasing like-minded people and people that just get it I know I found myself making a habit of over-analyzing and reading between the lines. I can never take things surface level. I always go a million miles an hour in my head, hyper-analyzing every little detail. Chances are, if you're anything like me, you're suffering the consequences of being a high achiever. I felt all of these things and more before, so trust me when I say it's all gonna be okay and I know because I've been there. Hey, if you're new, I'm Christina and I make videos for people who are feeling lonely. If you're a people pleaser, overachiever, over anything, then you're in the right place. Starting off with, if you feel like you've ever been really boring or not accepted in a group, maybe because of your intelligence or because you're a high achiever, it's probably because you're used to thinking and not feeling. For a lot of us, it's a lot easier to make a decision based on a two hour deep dive on YouTube and Google and Amazon and Reddit versus like a two minute decision, just like going with your gut. It's a lot easier to think my way through things and to feel my way through things. And sometimes then I think in a social setting where there's an element of like getting along with people, having banter, being lighthearted, sense of humor, like that is all about like feeling and intuition and just going with the flow. There's no kind of calculated way to make a good impression with someone. In a social setting, I feel like you can come across maybe awkward or weird if you are being too calculated. On the topic of socializing and meeting new people, any sign that you're trying too hard, I think is a bit of an ick. Like, we all have that image in our mind, don't we? Like that really nerdy, stereotyped trope of like a super weird, like shirt tucked way into their jeans, like jeans are super high-waisted. That sort of image of a really like nerdy person that is just really awkward and has braces and huge glasses. That image in my mind, back when I was like really socially awkward and I'd struggled to talk to people, that would that would be what was in my mind when I was like meeting new people. Like, don't be this, like try try to be anything but this. With that being said, it's extremely hard to, to take the advice of, don't overthink it and stop thinking too much like thinking when you're a high achiever is your superpower like you've gotten to where you are and gotten the achievements that you have because of your thinking and because of your over analysis and like emotions and feelings are then they're, they're not your strength they're your weakness like that's really tough that's the bit where you tend to hide and suppress that's that's the bit that kind of like knocked you to your knees almost. A lot of the times now as someone who's kind of like overcome social anxiety and doesn't really struggle to talk to new people, doesn't struggle walking into a room full of people where I know absolutely no one, like now I walk into those rooms with like barely any thinking. I'm, I'm not planning what I'm gonna say. Like I, I, I went to an event the other week in London for like an Apple event. Apple very kindly invited me to try out some of the new iPads and MacBooks um, and to like obviously make content about it. But but when I showed up and I met the people, I said hi and I was like rushing in late because I was, the, I was one of the last ones in I wasn't overthinking it like I was just being in the room I was like picking up the water I was saying hi recognized a girl that I'd met before and I went straight up to her and I just there was no thinking I just kind of did what I felt like doing and sometimes when I think back to the old me if you do feel like you're isolated and you don't fully belong you're not in the group it maybe is because you're thinking too much and you're not feeling enough like you're not just trusting what you want to do naturally and that's not to say like tomorrow you're gonna wake up that it will go perfectly straight away because it probably won't, but that's something you're not used to as a really smart person. Like you're used to like trying a new thing and being good at it straight away. Like that used to be one of my pet peeves like back in the day, like I would hate to try something new and not be good at it. So this one might be a tough one to grapple with, but the less you think in the social settings and the more you're just yourself, like do what comes naturally. I can't, I can't explain to you and give you tips on what comes naturally because 
you're, you're the best person to decide that. Like it, it comes naturally from you. There's no thinking involved. It's a slow and steady process on each time you do go in a social setting to be less and less in your head and just more and more in the room. The more you do that slowly and steadily each time, it will actually start to emerge. Like who you actually are will come to the surface. For some of us, this is a huge struggle and just showing up and meeting new people or even feeling like you belong in a group of people is a huge struggle because you feel like you have to hide who you are. Maybe you're not socially awkward, maybe you're actually pretty confident and like you're totally okay saying hi to new people, you can say hi to a stranger, you can walk into a room full of people and like kind of hold your own, but like you still feel like you're talking to people and you're not being yourself. Like you're in the room physically, but no one actually knows the real you. I spoke about this in my, you're not boring, you just like conversational skills video, but I used the concept of like, sometimes I feel like my representative is talking. Like Christina's representative, the palatable, nice, smiley, like, oh, hi, I'm a medical student. Like that Christina is in the room. But the real Christina with controversial opinions, who's very disorganized, very late, like has a lot of strong things to say. She's not in the room. She's really quiet. She's like, you, you've not seen her, you've not heard of her. Back in the day when I was really hyper aware of how I was coming across, I think partly why I was like hyper analyzing and thinking things through so much was because I was like calculating how am I coming across? How do I want to adapt that and present myself? Like I was like filtering myself in live action as I was talking to people. It was never like, like a genuine flow. It was like, okay, this is what I'm thinking. Let me say this and then like present this. Which is quite interesting because there's actually a term for this. I hope I'm using it correctly, but it's called masking. I'm reading a book about autism at the moment. It's called Unmasking Autism. And it's essentially how there are some people who are very hardworking, very dedicated and focused on one specific thing in their lives, don't allow themselves to have hobbies, easily fall into internet rabbit holes and deep dive for hours online. They rehearse every sort of interaction with a person. They come in like coordinated and calculated, ready to present themselves in a certain way. There are these people that present in this way and they might not realize it, but that can be a form of masking autism. And in the book, I found that really interesting because I read it and I was kind of like, sounds very familiar. But either way, I think the concept of masking for anyone outside of the book being about autism, outside of autism itself, masking is the thing where like, you are literally putting on a mask. Like you're, you're almost like swiping left and right on what you have to say. Like, no, don't say that. Like, don't mention that you love Doja Cat, Christina. Like, oh yes, say this, say that you're about to start work as a doctor in a month. Don't tell them that you're super nervous to start work. Pretend that you're really excited like yes I'm like saying yes and no to certain things in my head and I'm like filtering it and you can argue that's like just life as a human like we all filter things and we, we I, I know that we all do because I still do it now back then it was like to extreme levels like the things going through on the yes were very very slim I feel like it was 10 percent of what I would want to say that was coming through. Whereas now I feel like it's flipped like 90% of what I want to say comes out. But going on to my main point of feeling like you have to hide who you are. I was reading another book actually where the author was talking about the difference between feeling like you belong and then feeling like you fit in. The author is called Brene Brown and she interviewed like a bunch of high schoolers I think or a bunch of college students. And essentially they all said like fitting in is being accepted by the group because you change. But then belonging is fitting into a group as you are. And that, actually like low-key blew my mind and I was like that makes a lot of sense like you can have little moments where you feel accepted quote unquote maybe at work you finally feel like you can gossip with your other colleagues you finally go for cocktails up with them like outside of work you finally feel like you're accepted now like you fit in but like deep down something's missing like there's there's a piece missing to this puzzle maybe because you fit in, but you don't belong. You had to change yourself to be accepted. You're not being accepted as you are. And knowing this now, knowing the difference between fitting in and then belonging, I feel like, like going forward, any sort of like, like my work that I start in a couple of weeks time, or like, I don't know, a new group of friends that I make and now have that in my mind. Like Christina, don't aim to just fit in, aim to actually belong. If you feel like they accept you and they like you, but it's because, you're changing what you say or you're pretending to like certain things and you're hiding other parts that is that is not belonging and that is not it's not it's not what's going to make you feel good versus if you actually belong there is no wrong thing that you could say that there is there is no wrong thing that you could say everything you could say is right but with all that being said that is really tough like being as you are just show up as your real self be genuine like that's being genuine be yourself is such shitty advice it's such tough advice to follow. I'm like, I'm really passionate about this because people say that and it's so difficult to be yourself, quote unquote, when you don't even know who yourself even is. Like if you're one of those people that has an identity crisis like every other month and like you're so lost and like, who even am I? What am I doing? What am I working towards? What's the meaning of all this? Like if you ask yourself those existential questions, it's so hard to just be yourself. 
And one of the reasons why I feel like this is, is because chances are your work life has become your social life. If you've watched a few of my videos, you probably know I have a really big struggle with working too much and being like a workaholic and being addicted to work and like never taking breaks. It's something I'm slowly getting better at. And I just made a video on this. Um, it's called, you're not productive, you're emotionally numb. I had the mindset back in the day that like work, work is like the priority. And I know that's obvious to a lot of people. Like, of course, your university degree, your career, your promotion, like, Getting up the, the corporate ladder is really important. That is a priority. But like, it was not just like, this is a priority in my life. It was like, this has more priority than my life. Like it was more important than me and, and my well-being and, and how happy I am. Like I had, I had this weird thing where I just felt like work is escaping out of my fingers. And if enough time passes and I don't make the most of this, like what am I gonna be left with? And any time where I'd even think of stepping off, take a break, recharge, it would, it would literally feel like a complete waste of time. It almost was like taking a break means I'm a failure. Like it, it, I know that's really dark and really like bad, but like that's how I felt. And sometimes when it comes to being a sort of person who really values work and takes it super seriously, it's almost like an obsession. Sometimes when you are around people who don't share that same value as you, even though it's a toxic value, when you're around people who don't share the same values as you, it's really easy to feel boring. Like if you're around someone who really values like living in the moment, having fun, being spontaneous, traveling, like picking up, I don't know, a suitcase tomorrow and like going to Bali, like then they're a super spontaneous, fun, adventurous person. Their values are probably a little bit different to yours. You might get along with them because of other interests or because you think they're interesting because of how different they are. But like when you're constantly around other people who don't share the same values as you, it's very easy to feel a little bit like distant and a little bit boring, which is why I think sometimes high achievers and hard workers can have an obsession with like finding the right people, finding like-minded people. That was, that was something that was on my mind for years. But I think my absolute obsession to escape high school, escape college, get into university was mainly because I just felt so alone. Like uh, yeah, I had I went to high school with a bunch of people and I went to college, which is sixth form, with a bunch of people, but I didn't feel like, I did, like no one shared the same values as me. I was just looking for people with the same values, which is quite surprising because at university, I thought, okay, I'm going to medical school. Like, like I, of course I'm gonna meet a bunch of people who are obsessed with work like I am. Of course I'm gonna meet people who are dedicated to studying. I thought I was gonna meet people like that. I actually didn't meet many people like that. Like not a lot of people are obsessed with work like I am. Like that's just a Christina thing. Apparently that's not a medical school student doctor thing. But my main point is that if you do feel isolated, it's less to do with a like-minded people thing. Maybe that plays a part, but it's also like finding people who have the same values. Like you, like a lot. So the, the reason why I, I came to uni, I didn't meet people obsessed with work and like, like absolutely hunger and driven like I am, but I have met people with the same values, which is why I have a lot more friends now. Even though they don't work throughout the weekend and every evening like I do, like we still can bond and have a conversation and like respect each other. We like talking about the same things. I, I like them for them and who they are and they like me for who I am. Like there's shared values there that maybe I didn't have before. Another reason why you might feel a little bit boring and maybe even isolated is because you're fueled by curiosity and not by entertainment. Back in high school, I can't even count the amount of times I would be sat like like listening in at lunchtime to like a group conversation about like boys or I don't know, like someone's Saturday night party that I didn't get invited to. And I'd literally just be like, like a little bit lost and I'd, I'd feel a bit like, is this what we're talking about? Like, is this, is this what I was so excited to be involved with? Like sometimes I think when you are like almost nerdy, like when you are like a bit of a bit of a nerd and you like talking about your little quirky thing, sometimes I think you're fueled by curiosity and not entertainment. Some people love to talk about Love Island and what's happening on the latest Netflix show, but you might be more interested in like a super detailed documentary that you watch on YouTube. Some people love to talk about social media and which influencer has just broken up with another influencer. Whereas you might like to talk about history and you're really passionate about World War II and there's a recent discovery in World War II that's happened recently on the news. Some people really like entertainment and maybe even popular culture is a better term to use. Some people are really interested in popular culture. Whereas you are probably more fueled by curiosity. Like you've got a specific interest, which you're just super passionate about. You're not too keen on the small talk or what's popular in the news. It's more like you want to go deep and actually ask questions, be a bit more curious. Yeah, I really want to emphasize, I'm not shaming anyone that talks about social media or influencers is a bad thing. I'm quite interested in certain people on social media and certain influencers. Like a good example of this is actually, I was on a date with a guy a couple of weeks ago, but he was really passionate about World War II, I think. Like he was talking about it and I was just like, history is not my bag. Like I, I do not, 
I do not understand history. I'm not interested in it. It's I'll respect it from someone else, but it's just not my thing. And I think he could tell from my facial expression. And at the time, I was watching a reality show with my flatmate, like Married at First Sight. It was a, it was it's a really good show, by the way. And he made a weird comment about like I would never watch that. I don't want my ears to bleed or something like that. And I was just like okay okay that's not very nice i wouldn't i wouldn't say that to you someone who's interested in history like i wouldn't i wouldn't insult your passion or your interest just because it's like a maybe it's deemed as like a less intelligent thing watching reality tv but i just thought like i i can respect other people's other people's interests whether it's like a typically intelligent interest or an unintelligent one like our interests are our interests i don't think we should be shamed for them Especially because you can kind of like both. I could like World War II and love reality TV at the same time. Like, anyway. Another thing that comes with being a really intelligent, smart person is that you're used to being lonely. I'm convinced there's a huge overlap between being an introvert and being like a really smart, kind of hardworking person. Let me know in the comments if you disagree, but I feel like a lot of the people that are hardworking and really smart, high achievers, got the accomplishments, really driven, you like your alone time. Like, when else are you getting the work done? When are you, when else are you studying and working and getting like working a side hustle? I feel like you're used to being lonely or alone, whichever one. And sometimes I think the being lonely can be like like a happy place. Like you feel more comfortable on your own. You're not going to be judged, ridiculed. Like it's a safe space. But then also the lonely thing can be a bit of like a self fulfilling prophecy because you're so used to being alone. You just gravitate towards that, and then because you're alone, you actually don't go out and meet new people. I literally showed up at university, 18, first day of med school, and I was like, I feel like I'm so behind. Like everyone else just, it was like natural. Like they just knew how to say hi to someone new. Oh, hi, are you in my class? Oh my God, you're in this group. I'm in that group. Like, it was just like, it came naturally to everyone else. Whereas I felt like I was like three or four years behind. Like I felt like I was on the back foot. Social skills are definitely something that I learned and it's never too late to learn. Cause I, like I said, I felt like I was super behind, but I feel like I've caught up now. Another reason you might feel alone when you're a really intelligent person is because you prefer quality over quantity. Unless you were insecure like I was, chances are you'll probably be really picky with friendships. Like you aren't just willing to settle for or someone that makes fun of your your TV shows that you watch and says that they're going to make their ears bleed. Like you won't settle for that. Instead, you'd actually prefer quality friendships, like people that do respect you and do validate the things that you're interested in. Maybe they don't share them or agree with them, but like they make you feel seen. And chances are, because you have such a standard for I want quality friends, I want people that are going to like respect me like I respect them, you'd actually prefer to just have no friends than have bad ones. This was something that I spoke about in my you're not crazy, your friends are just toxic video where I was talking about the fact that like I, I had a phase where I was quite insecure about friendships and I felt I felt so alone that I was like, I just have to put up with anyone. I, I don't deserve to be picky. Like if, if someone shows me attention and says that they like me and wants to hang out with me, like, I just have to have that. I just have to put up with it. It doesn't matter if it comes with really toxic things or me investing so much into the friendship and feeling like I care so much. I'm always here for you. I always reply to your messages. I'm always checking in. I'm never being invited to things, but I'm always like thinking of you. Like just sometimes it, it, this was more of an insecurity thing than like a like an intelligence thing but bear in mind with friendships quality always matters over quantity trust me you do not need buckets of friends even now as a much more confident person I don't have I don't have reams and reams of friends like I have amazing amazing friends that know me really well and I don't have to pretend and like they they know me well but I don't have like buckets and buckets of them and I, I don't even think that's what you want because I've had bigger friendship groups before throughout my whole life and I've noticed that there's always a bit more drama in the bigger friendship groups not for any other reason probably just because more like probability wise if you're friends with a group of like eight people there's eight chances for drama to happen versus if you have like a smaller group of three people that you know, there's a lot less chance for drama to happen. But back then I was in my quantity era. Back when I was like 14, 15, 16, I was like as many as possible. Is that like, I, I just, I was so insecure. Like looking back, I actually feel bad for myself. Whereas now I'm in my quality era. Sometimes I think because I was super smart back then, I, I'm still smart now, I guess, but like I was studying a lot then and I was working super hard on grades and stuff. I sometimes I think when you are a really smart person, I think it's easier for you to be insecure because you know just how much you don't know. You know where all the gaps in your knowledge are. You know just how far you have to go to get to your next goal. You can hyper fixate on all your flaws and all your setbacks. I have a lot more confidence now. And I think partly the reason why is because I'm not hyper fixating on 
what my my flaws are and the gaps in my knowledge and how much I have to go and how much I have to improve to get to where I want to be. Like, I think back then I was super focused on like the gap. Whereas now I, I, I don't feel like I have a gap. I don't, I don't feel like I'm trying to go anywhere. But I want to know what you think in the comments. Do you think smart people have a harder time with confidence? Because my philosophy is, I feel like we do. Another reason why you might have a harder time socially is because you hate small talk. I was literally at a friend's birthday party years ago. I remember we were just kind of like all talking like at the party. And I remember I met some of their other friends I'd never met before. It was the first time that I met them. And they were talking about something from work and I could kind of like follow along. Like I had I had an idea of what was happening. But when the person like finished telling the story and it was a bit of like an anti-climax, like they built up the story to be this big thing and like, oh my gosh, you'll never guess what happened. And then it was just like something like mediocre. I was a bit like, oh, and sometimes like that that's sometimes how I feel with small talk like sometimes I just feel like I'm following an organ and I'm nodding I'm being polite I'm like interested active listening skills and I'm just like I feel like I'm like watching the conversation but I'm not in the conversation like sometimes small talk it really depends but sometimes it just doesn't really hit the spot for me to like really like be interested in like want to engage and I know that's such a cliche like that's such like a pick me thing to say like I hate small talk but like like genuinely, I feel like for me to engage in the small talk, I would have to be pretending and like being fake. And then sometimes it's just exhausting to be fake and to like pretend like I'm interested in. So then it's like, what's the point? I'll just be quiet. And that's why I think sometimes when you are this sort of person, it's very easy to be like misunderstood by people. Like people, they see you and you know, they know a lot about you. Sometimes you can be this sort of person and like your success will speak for itself. Like people will know you from your achievements, from the lifestyle you have or what you've achieved. So people will have an idea of you, but you're misunderstood because they don't know like the real you. I'm very intrigued to read more about this autism book that I'm currently reading. I'm reading it on Audible and I've been called autistic a few times by my friends. And it's a little bit stressful because all my friends are literal doctors. Like we've all graduated now, me and my friends. And so like when I get called autistic, by doctors, it, like, it stresses me out. Like I need to think, I need to take this seriously. And I say we are, all my friends are doctors. We're all baby doctors. Like none of us have even started practice yet. We start practice next month, but I'm some, even some of the comments I get on these videos, some of you guys have said, you know, no, I'm, I'm not socially awkward, I'm just autistic. Or no, I'm not boring, I'm just autistic. And so I, I'm now figuring out that a lot of the things that I mentioned, or maybe you guys struggle with, I struggle with, maybe some of them overlap with autism. If some of you guys recognize yourself in these videos and say that you have autism, I think it might be interesting and important to shed light on them as well. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my you're not productive, you're just emotionally numb video. But other than that, let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.